Hey guys, it's Kristen with CKC Patterns, and today I'm going to show you how to sew on a shank button or a post button. It's this kind of button. I made these fabric covered buttons to put on my son's Malcolm's robe, and it's really easy to make the covered buttons if you get a little kit. So today I'm going to show you how to actually sew the buttons on. I'm going to start at the very beginning, even with how to thread the needle, in case you haven't done that before. It all goes pretty quickly, but I'm going to show you how so you know what's going on. Now, first of all, I did already mark the button placement on Malcolm's robe. You can see that here. So there's one on each side. You can do just the one side. What I like about Malcolm's robe too, if it's your first time doing buttons, um, you don't actually have to do a buttonhole because it has that loop there. And so I have my two marked. You can do either just the one side or you can put it on both sides to keep it evened out. It just kind of looks cool that way. So I'm doing two today. Now I'm gonna put my camera down just so that I have two hands. That definitely helps. Okay, so to get started, you want just a hand sewing needle and a piece of thread. I try to do it long enough that it'll get me through two buttonholes. So you just put the thread through and pull it until you bring the two ends together. Now I know some hand working projects you don't tie the two ends, but for this we do. You bring it to the end, tie a knot on itself. And when I'm working with um, this kind of a sturdy button that I want to make sure it stays in, I usually do two knots at the end and try to get them in exactly the same place. That does take a little practice, getting it to line up at the exact same place. If you miss the first time, just try again. You can put as many knots on there as you want. So you see I have the knot on one end and my needle on the other. Okay, so now I'm gonna take, decide which dot you wanna do. I have mine right here. Now something important that I've noticed with these shank or post buttons, see they have the little piece that goes up and down that the thread goes through. Now if you put your shank button on this way with the, the shank going horizontal, that allows the button to kind of flip up and down. If you have ever seen a floppy button, that's kind of what causes that. I like them to be more sturdy, so I actually put it with the shank vertical on the robe or the shirt. So when I go to sew it on, I always make sure that I'm sewing side to side and keeping that piece up and down. Okay, so keeping that in mind, first I always anchor my thread on the fabric. So I'm gonna sew on the fabric first without the button. So here's my dot. I'm gonna go down through one side of the dot and back up through the other side. It's only about, I don't know, is that like a millimeter thick? Maybe two millimeters. And you wanna make sure it's right in the right place. So I go across and pull that through. Make sure your thread comes through all nice. So you do end up with that little knot on the right side of the fabric. And then I go again. And I try to go through the exact same holes. Now, especially with kids' clothing, it's really important to have your buttons on there really tight. And this has always worked well for me. Okay, now as you do it, also notice, I don't know if you can tell, but as I sewed that, when I, when I come up through, instead of just pulling my fabric, then when I have this loop here, if you can see it against the white wall, I also put my needle through that loop so that as I pull up on the needle, it actually ties a knot on itself. So it should pull the knot down tight right up against the fabric okay that's a big part in keeping your your uh, buttons tight okay so now that I've I've went through three times sometimes you can get away with two but I want it to be nice and secure so once you do that I pick up the shank button okay and I am going to go through that little shank two times with my needle I went up, back down again, up, back down again. So I kind of have it looped on here. Now I can kind of let go of that for a second and just let it hang there. I always love this on Cinderella, the old Cinderella cartoon. I don't know if you remember that scene with the mice. Anyway, they kind of do it this way. So now that that shank button is kind of hanging loose, now I'm going to go back through the fabric and do exactly what I did a second ago. I'm going to go in one side, out the other. And as I pull up on that, it pulls that shank button up into place. You see that? And, and remember I sewed from one side to the other and that automatically makes my shank under there go up and down rather than side to side. Okay, and you wanna pull that pretty tight 
Even though it seems floppy, you can still get it tight in there. Okay, then I'm going to do kind of the same thing. Now I have a little loop of thread that just didn't pull through. You always want to pay attention, make sure your thread's coming through before you go on again. Okay, so I'm going to essentially do what I did a second ago. I, I don't personally ever go to the underside. I kind of stay on the top. So we're going to go through the little metal loop again. You can do it once or twice, whichever you want. I usually do twice just to make it count, right? <laughs> and now, just kind of holding the button up out of the way, I'm going to do the exact same thing again. From one side to the other, I'm going to sew down and then back out, all in one stitch. Now, as you're doing that, you want to make sure it does go through both layers underneath. Malcolm's robe is lined, so... Well, if you don't want the stitching to show on the back, you could go through one layer, but to me it's more important to have it be in there really, really tight. I don't want to tear the front fabric, so I go through both layers. Because to me, it's not a big deal to have your button threads showing on the back side. Everybody knows there's a button there, okay? So, after you do that, I like to do a couple more times. Now, as you do those stitches, you can do one kind of toward the top of the loop and one kind of toward the bottom of the loop. And that again gives it kind of two anchor points rather than just one. That also helps keep it from flopping too much when they wear it. Now some buttons have really long shanks so they may flop no matter what you do. But for the most part if you make it go vertical, making horizontal stitches to keep the post vertical, your button shouldn't be too floppy. Okay, so now once I've done that, um, you can either tie it off under the button in front, which works perfectly fine. But I actually, usually, this is the only time I go to the back. So I find the right spot. I take my needle through to the inside of the fabric, okay? And I only do this when I'm ready to tie it off and be done. And the reason I do that is I told you I like having the button threads show on the other side. If you see, sometimes I end up with kind of two horizontal lines. Um, I like to go back and add my few securing stitches in a way, if you can see that, in a way that makes it kind of a perfect dot. Like if you look inside most of your shirts, you see a nice dot there. You don't see lines, you don't see weird X's. So I actually go add a few stitches to make it look really neat underneath there. And at the same time, remember as I sew through, the way you want to knot your thread is you let you have that loop coming up. And remember, you can put your needle through the loop, and then as you pull tight, it ties it in a knot. So then you're not ever here at the end. I, I remember when I was first learning, I was I would tie a knot and then try to push it so it'd be close to the fabric. But that's not really necessary. The way you tie it off, I'll show that one more time. You go through. You start to pull it till you have a loop here. And then right at the end, I put my needle through that loop and it automatically pulls that knot close to the fabric. Now if you end up with little extra loops like I just did, it happens more often with some fabrics than other. Like if it's really tightly woven fabric, sometimes it doesn't let your thread go through. So sometimes, so I kind of separate my two threads and just kind of gently pull on each one to make sure you get that out. And if it doesn't, there's a trick for that too. You don't want to just cut those loops off because then you'll lose your button. So if you have just an extra loop, if you can see that, you could cut it all off and start over, but I'm not a fan of that. So what I do, I actually go through those little loops with my needle. This is a little troubleshooting thing. Now, this is especially for my own kids. I maybe would start over if it was for a boutique customer. But for my own kids, I just take my needle through those loops and sew another knot and it just kind of pulls those in and makes it look like you did it on purpose. <laughs> See how it kind of took away the problem there? Now those loops aren't sticking way up. Okay, so once you've done that, if you put your thread through the loop as you pulled on it, your um, thread is now tight. So you have your knot in there, so just cut it close to the thread. Okay, and that is really all there is to it. So now I have a nice button. It's not too floppy. See, it's in there pretty solid. Um, and on the back, we have a nice dot so that even if it, I guess I could have cut that a little closer. I'll go back and trim it. 
Even if it doesn't match the color of your inside, it still looks neat. Again, if you don't want that dot to show, you can sew only through the black layer of the fabric. It's really not any harder. It just depends how sturdy you want the button to be. So that's how we did it. I'm going to go ahead and see I have this other side. You can see the other dot that it will loop onto. This one just is there to balance it out. So I'm, I will go do the exact same thing on this side. But we already took 10 minutes of your time and I think you're a pro. So if you need to see it again, you can go back and rewatch the video. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you are excited to try this out. And again, I really love these um, fabric covered buttons. If you haven't used them before, you should give it a try. They just come with a little kit at lots of different fabric stores. Um, and it just makes a neat added detail. You can use it with any kind of fabric to make it personalized. But I hope that's helpful. We have more fun videos coming to help again with Malcolm's robe. Thanks, guys. Hi, thanks for watching. Make, Make sure, sure you subscribe. <laughs>